for security? There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right, let's rock and roll. Good morning, everybody. Today is Thursday, November 9th, 2023. Welcome to episode 491 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Briefing Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier, coming hot off the heels of Simply CyberCon 23. I know many of you were there. Good times had by all. Guys, guess what? The next 45 minutes, me, you, Catchy BT, Leon Elliott, Ms. Julian, Kimberly can fix it. Christopher Young, far from good, not only IT, Alicia, Jerry Taylor, McDonald, James McQuiggan from 35,000 feet, Marcus Kyler with the Yeats, <laughs> Emmanuel Dark, and so many long timers and first timers are going to be shredding the top cybersecurity news stories of the day. And I'll be providing my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. So what can we use this information for to drive cyber risk reduction for our stakeholders? Or if we're looking to break into the industry, guess what? You're going to get asked in any single, single, any single, single job interview. How do you stay current on industry? The Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Briefing Podcast is a phenomenal answer. Let me fix the Chiron. We are running a, a come on, Chiron. Chiron. There we go. Holla. All right. By the way, uh, in addition to, you know, staying current on the industry, you're also going to be doing phenomenal networking. Look at all these beautiful people over here. Already 148 stacking in here. We set a new record on Tuesday with 423. Let's see if we can pump those numbers. The networking, it's phenomenal. Say hi, say what's up. Introduce yourself. All right, but before we get into the news, before we get into uh, Haircut Fish's meme of the week, let me say shout out and love to the stream sponsors who enable me to deliver this hot take to you every single morning, starting with my good friend, Eric Taylor, over at Barricade Cyber Solution. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber techs, and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. But don't sweat it. You know who's got a bottle of the pink stuff? Eric Taylor and Barricade Cyber Solutions. They know how to mitigate, mollify, soothe, ease the burn, and, and mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents like ransomware. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. At a minimum, bookmark them. Because when you need, when you're... <laughs> When it's a dumpster fire outside and you need a fire extinguisher, you know what you want to not have to go do? Find one. Bookmark barricadecyber.com. Break glass them in case of emergency. Also, just, you know, have a conversation with them. It's all about good times. Holla at Panopsi Security. Y'all get a partner who understands your program and your business goals. GRC Life is all about helping the business achieve their business goals while doing it in a secure way. And if you're not exactly sure how to do that, that's okay. Don't sweat it. Panopsi Security can be like a VC. So they can come in and straighten you out, give you a one-year, three-year roadmap, cyber maturity. If your business is reactive on InfoSec or you're kind of um, stri um, not stripped down, but um, like constrained on resources being applied to cybersecurity, take advantage of Panopsi Security, allow them to help you and come up with a tailored bespoke plan that gives accountability to your resource availability, your current cybersecurity maturity, and your threat landscape. It's a win-win-win all over the place. Panopsi.com, check them out. Links in the description below. Also anti-siphon training. More about them at the mid-roll. And can I just say, Jesus H.C., 
John Strand's keynote last night or yesterday. What a rock and roll time. Remember, each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPE. So be sure to say what's up in chat. Grab a screen cap. Hashtag Team Live if you're live with us right now. I see 215 of you wonderful people like Darius Cater, Dream Logic, Laura Flores, and Marlon Johnson. Hashtag Team Live in chat. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're coming hot off the heels and need a little cheat code called coffee. Um, if you're coming hot off the heels of Simply Cybercon, like Catch EPT was saying. Woo. Yesterday was a long one, y'all, but guess what? I hate to say it, but this is the job. This is what cyber is. It's all about rise and grind. I'm not saying you should be unhealthy. I'm just saying, um, you know, no days off. <laughs> oh, my God, that coffee is delicious. Hello. If you're watching on replay, hashtag team replay coming at you. Hey, John Capello. Can't wait to see you, buddy. Love it. Love it. Love it. John Capello, a former cadet student in chat. Good to see you. All right, hashtag team replay if you're in chat. And by the way, if today is your first day on the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, maybe Christopher Young's first day. I'm not sure if Christopher Young has been on the Daily Cyber Threat Brief before, but if this is your fit first time on the Daily Cyber Threat Brief, holler at me with a hashtag first timer. I love to welcome the first timers. Plus, we have a special sound effect and a special um, uh, emote. Squad members know what I'm talking about that you can take advantage of. So holler at us and let's go. There he is, Christopher Young. I knew it. Christopher Young, first timer. Let's give him some love, y'all. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Let's get that sound effect, get that emote, hot action going. Doink, 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 doink. There we go, Christopher Young. All right. You're welcome, buddy. It's what we do here. All right, guys. So check it out. It is Thursday, so it's uh, Haircut Fish's meme of the week. We're going to get into that in a hot minute. Um, quick reminder, want to let everybody know that, um, we've put the certificate of attendance for the six CPEs for attending simply CyberCon. So if you registered for attendance and, uh, well, if you registered for attendance and you didn't use a burner email, I'm looking at you, um, you will get emailed soon, a certificate of attendance and it's got my signature and it's all legit for six CPEs. So coming at you, we got a new, another first timer. Hey, Christopher Perez Nieves. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. We're all about good times in here. Hey, Omatol, it's been a minute. Good to see you. Love it, love it, love it. Oh yeah. Hey, CJ. Uh, thanks. Whoever said, whoever said that. Just as a reminder, I forget to tell people. I do not research or prepare or look. I don't even like the the closest thing I know about what we're going to be talking about right now is I bring up the um, I click on links and bring up tabs so we can jump to them. That's it. So I, I don't know what we're going to be getting into today, but that's part of the fun of it. Right. You get my <laughs> you get my raw take. And sometimes sometimes it's MFA on 23 and me. And I and I just melt down and lose my mind in the most insane way possible. Catch me outside. How about that? Mm hmm. All right, y'all. It's time to get to work. Do me a favor, sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds of the hot news wash over us in an awesome wave. I will see all of you, first timers and long timers, at the mid roll. Let's go. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. These are the cybersecurity headlines for Thursday, November 9th, 2023. I'm Rich Straffolino. U.S. launches Shields Ready campaign. DHS, CISA, and FEMA announced this new campaign to promote overall resiliency and security for critical national infrastructure. <clears throat> if it sounds familiar, CISA launched a Shields Up campaign previously. Shields Ready focuses on broad strategies to prepare critical infrastructure for disruption. Shields Up is more about time-sensitive actions for specific risks. This new campaign asks infrastructure providers to identify the most critical assets for operations, consider a range of threats to disruption and evaluate their actual risk, and develop a risk management plan, as well as maintain realistic incident response. All right. Microsoft. So a couple things here. One, um, it says the Shields Ready Initiative urges providers. I think this is actually a um, typo here. Because Shields Up is the campaign that's already out there. Shields Ready is what they're talking about launching right now. And then they talk about the fourth, the four pillars here. So actually, tough break CSO online. I think this is a typo. 
Um, but anyways, the four pillars of uh, this uh, Shields Ready initiative, which is different than Shields Up, as they pointed out. This is more uh, left of boom type stuff, okay? Uh, identify critical systems. You should have been doing that already. Uh, consider full range of threats and hazards to disrupt infrastructure. Okay, again, like this isn't mm, groundbreaking here. Uh, develop a strategic risk management plan. Uh, okay. Uh, I can see this being done at the um, organization level. They've already been doing this at the industry level. So this isn't really new. And then exercise incident response and recovery plans. Okay, so check it out. Here's the, th the four things. Three, the three of the four things is basically just a rehash of what they've already been doing. Um, the fourth thing is doing tabletop exercises. That's what this is. And I can't agree more. Tabletop exercises is incredibly valuable. Unfortunately, a lot of times the business doesn't see the value in it. So they're like, yeah, I'll go to a tabletop exercise. We'll check the compliance box, but I'm going to be on my phone. Uh, <laughs> Emmanuel Dark Shields at 25%, Captain. Um, that's wicked funny. All right, um, so check it out. Let me let me show you this thing. If you don't know about this, when Obama was president, um, when Obama was president, he basically outlined that we're going to do critical infrastructure. It was like executive order 633. There was a lot of threes and sixes in the executive order. But basically, they outlined, I want to say, 18 critical infrastructures. And you can see they're all here. Chemical, com commercial, which is kind of silly. Commercial facilities like um, uh, sports stadiums and uh, in like arenas. You know, for T-Swift tours, T-Swift isn't doing fairgrounds, bro. 75,000 seats at a minimum. What's up, Swifty? All right. Comms, crit uh, critical manufacturing, dams. Uh, defense industrial base. This is where CMMC lives. Healthcare, emergency services. You could see them all here, right? Now, oil and gas energy is in here. Uh, where is it? Uh, hold on. Where's the energy sector, brah? There is an energy. Oh, here it is. Energy sector, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing. When you drill into them, okay, each critical infrastructure has their own industry-specific protection plan, which is what you can see here. Right. And this is why, like, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this. A, if you work in one, priceless pancakes with a super chat coming at you. Did we just become best friends. Yep. Uh, <laughs> thanks, uh, priceless pancake for the super chat. And yeah, uh, Sissa potentially losing a quarter of their funding. So they took it. Hopefully, hopefully not. But just to, just to give you an example, this is an energy sector specific plan. This is an eight year old plan. All critical infrastructure sectors were required to create a plan to comply with the executive order. They did all these things. And you, I, I invite you to go read it if you work in one of these industries transportation, wastewater, looking at UJ Gold, right? Uh, healthcare uh, was a big one for me. But, but check it out. The, the whole reason I'm showing you this is because this was documented in 2015 on their plan on securing critical infrastructure, going back to these four pillars for Shields Ready. Identify most critical assets. Consider full range of threats. Bro, 2015's on the phone. They want to talk to you about these things. Now, what I do want to say is in our industry, if you've been around long enough, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's not uncommon for us to have to continuously repeat and repeat and repeat. Don't use crappy passwords. Don't use crappy passwords. Don't use crappy passwords. Patch, patch, patch. Patch it. Right. So this is on brand for our industry. But I just want you to know as a practitioner that these four pillars are not we're not breaking new ground. Don't get a gold shovel and call a press conference and kick a, a mound of dirt out because we're going to be building on this, you know, fresh earth. This is a rehash. But I do appreciate this uh, incident response recovery plans being thrust to the front of the uh, of the line tabletop exercises is the TLDR on this one. And Meta announced AI imagery rules. Microsoft President Brad Smith announced the company will offer a new tool to fight the rise of digitally altered images ahead of the 2024 U.S. elections. This will cryptographically watermark images and video, which will allow anyone online to see if an image is altered or created with AI. Microsoft will make the tool available initially to political candidates for free. It may eventually expand it to more groups after November. In a similar vein, Meta announced it will require advertisers to disclose political ads with media altered or generated by software ahead of the election. The new policy will take effect in January 2024. All right. All right. Hey, okay, so first of all, shall we play a game? I like this. Way to go. If you've known me for a while, every single year, um, at the end of the year, which is coming soon, 
at the end of the year, you know, a bunch of like talking heads give their predictions for the upcoming year. What's going to, what big security threat, what freaking buzzword is going to be blowing up? Is it going to be um, digital transformation like it was in 2020? Is it going to be single pane of glass? Next gen. Tell us, Jerry, what is it? Okay, so for me, every year I'm like, deep fakes, there's going to be a massive political upheaval because of a deep fake ad. And I've been wrong. I've been, say- <laughs> I've been saying it since 2015. And I'm wrong every year. But I feel like, um, you know, like saying, you know, you know, Tom Brady's going to retire. Eventually it'll come, right? Eventually it'll happen. So um, I like that Microsoft's getting in front of this. Um, require so Microsoft isn't the one who can require politicians to declare that um, content made in political ads is made by AI. That'll have to be. Um, I don't know if that's like a regulatory thing or it has to do with election law or you know like um, you know like super PACs and how you can fund things. Like whoever's responsible for making rules about that, they're the ones who are going to have to make the rule that you have to use AI. I love it. By the way, we've already seen. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we've already seen political ads that are leveraging uh, artwork generated by AI. I've seen one with Conda, uh, not Condoleezza Rice, uh, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And it's like, you know, uh, rioters and marching with pitchforks and stuff like that. And it's completely AI generated. You just look at the hands and the people have like 95 fingers. Okay. But right now there's no rule for you to disclose that. So as the generative AI gets better and better and better, um, honestly, deep fake is actually where you put the face over an actual person in the video runs. Creating completely new art is not deep fake. That's something else. But I do appreciate that they're addressing both of these things and requiring you to say it. Here's two things that I, I predict or I'm thinking about. One, um, I hope I hope it's as explicit. You know how like a couple years ago, like 10 years ago, at least in the United States, um, you used to have to say like, I'm Joe Biden and I support this ad or I'm uh, Donald Trump and I endorse this ad. Like whatever it was, if you if you're if you're paying attention, like now all political ads typically have the the actual politician saying, I endorse this ad because these like special interest groups were like spinning up their own ads and like saying incredibly like outrageous, like really, really far left or really, really far right. Like, oh, like this candidate eats babies. And you're like, uh, what? So you'd have to have the politician saying that I endorse the ad, right? So this one, they're going to say this ad was created using AI or uh, in part somewhat AI, whatever. So I uh, wonder if we will see the Mr. Cooper attack, Cat GPT. We just become best friends. Yep. Thank you. Again? So, yeah, I approve this message. Thank you, Rhonda. So I hope they do. Here's the one thing I hope. I hope it doesn't become a little freaking asterisk. You know how, like, like results may vary or it's like like legal size four font on the bottom that says it's created by AI. I hope it's not that. I hope it's much more, excuse me. I hope it's much more in your face, um, explicit that it's AI generated. Um, and you know, I hope, I hope they get their arms around that. Cause I think it's bad. The other thing I'll say is, um, if you're going the right way, yes, you can say it, but I'm sure there'll be <laughs> foreign threat actors who are trying to meddle in elections, not naming names, but I could see foreign officials meddling in elections, not really given AF about, um, I, don't, I, I just used AF incorrectly too, by the way. I could see foreign meddling and not really calling out that it's a deep fake or AI generated and not really giving a crap because if it gets pulled down, it already did its job, right? Uh, just as a quick side note, I did use busing yesterday on the Simply CyberCon at some point. I told my son over dinner that I used busing. He asked me how I used it. I told him how I used it. He rolled his eyes and said, that is not how you use the word busing, dad. Don't, don't do that. Don't. Do that. <laughs> so, ah. Uh... App Defense Alliance moves under the Linux Foundation. Google started the App Defense Alliance back in 2019, initially to help detect malicious apps in the Play Store. Since then, it's expanded to security assessments for apps and cloud services, as well as malware mitigation. The company announced that the ADA will now join the Linux Foundation Project Joint Development Foundation as an independent organization. The move will also see Meta and Microsoft join the ADA steering committee. The hope is that the project will be able to collaborate on mobile industry standards to improve app security. Okay. 
So two things are happening in our industry, okay? And by industry, I mean um, like society, okay? <laughs> let me let me close this. Two things are happening in our society. First of all, and I'm sure everybody knows this, but it, it just bears repeating as a baseline. Like cloud apps, SaaS applications, it's like 70% of what we use. I'm streaming with Restream. I'm talking with Discord. I'm looking at Google Chrome. Like, like even like apps you download, most of them are just skins uh, of a web of a web browser that reaches in and uses APIs to some backend infrastructure. SaaS apps are huge. Mobile apps are also huge, right? How many people, like how many people, hold on. I, I'm just kind of curious, right? We got 346 of you. I want to ask this really question. Uh, if you're driving, don't do that. Are you watching on mobile or, uh, you know, you know, big computer, like laptop, desktop, laptop? Are you watching on mobile? Okay. I just want to know, like, just, I'm just curious, how many people, are you watching the daily cyber threat briefing on your mobile device? Ta and I guess tablet counts as mobile, or are you watching on like a laptop desktop? I'm kind of curious what the distribution is. Anyways, lots of people are using mobile, and I love that we're beginning to um, converge, if you will, with um, mobile software security, like secure development of mobile software. Now they're moving it under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation, which is massive. This is gonna get the attention it deserves. Uh, we've seen kind of an open source uh, approach of converging under big projects and, and like Meta, Google, Microsoft, kind of taking ownership in some way as, as a steward over those things. So I think this is good. I do wanna say shout out, if you are a mobile app developer or you're working in any of that space, um, oh, good. Valentino's watching on a VCR. <laughs> Still blinking 12 o'clock, Valentino. Here's the deal. Yesterday on Simply CyberCon in track one, Jin Gong, who was the second to last speaker, did an entire talk on mobile app privacy and security. He shared an A load of, re of resources um, that I thought was absolutely fantastic. And if you are in that space, I strongly encourage you to check out that particular video. Uh, we're going to be carving up the Simply CyberCon videos and releasing them uh, individually soon. But um, yeah, this is this is a hot area. Um, again, if you are looking to break into cyber, you're looking to get a niche and a focus. Cloud is huge, um, but mobile mobile security and helping you know, like if you're a software developer and you want to get into security, DevOps, DevSecOps around mobile sec. Um, is, 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 it's so hot right now. I really do need to get a bookmark that it's so hot. Um, Will Ferrell thing, uh, Dan Reardon, are you in chat? Like, let me, let me see really quickly. I don't, I don't want to belabor you all, but there we go. There we go. Mobile security. <laughs> Mobile security is so hot right now. <laughs> all right. ICE's devices entice vices. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security Office of the Inspector General issued a report on a recent investigation into equipment management and IT policies by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. The report found MDM issues that could put sensitive data at risk. It found thousands of unauthorized apps on devices, ranging from third-party file transfer software to VPN apps and messaging platforms. It also included apps formerly banned from government IT systems. It didn't name TikTok, but it can be assumed TikTok. ICE's IT policies state that it doesn't monitor data sent from these user-installed personal applications. Ahead of the report's release, ICE implemented some auditor recommendations, like disabling prohibited apps. What? Okay, hold on. This is ridiculous, okay? I want to know... I want to... So listen... The, the story starts out, America's immigration cops, which is basically ICE, have pushed back against an official probe. I want to know what their argument is that they're pushing back on. Like, what leg are you standing on, ICE? Um, yeah, the story doesn't go into that, okay? All the story d does is point out how it, it, Office of Inspector General, who is watching the watchers, did an audit. I find this gross. Dude, it says official phone. Guess what? You don't own the phone. It's not your device. You don't have 
any authority to decide what apps to install. I get it. You like TikTok. Guess what? Buy a new phone. Buy your own phone. Get your own device. This is an issued device. I'm just going to put it, put aside the fact that it's a government uh, taxpayer funded mobile device. Dude, this is an organizational device for federal law enforcement. Okay. Right. That's what ICE is federal law enforcement. Um, I, I agree with you. All right. And what they're doing is they're not supposed to be installing stuff and they're installing all sorts of stuff. They have MDM on it, mobile device management, which is a way for organizations to centrally, centrally manage um, mobile devices, the apps installed, you lose your phone, you can wipe it, these type of things. Um, it looks like they've rolled it out, but they haven't done a very good job of um, configuring it. Probably went with a nice default install. Way to go. Way to go on that one. Um, but here's the thing. You might be like, oh, Jerry, what's the big deal? Here's the big deal. Those devices, first of all, they are accessing federal information, right? I don't know what level of classification, but there you go. First of all, federal information, federal systems. They are putting VPNs on them, which means that they're able to connect um, out and, and go out onto the internet somewhere else, potentially hiding where they are. They talked about third-party sharing apps. So now they're moving data off their phone. Dude, insider threat, anybody? It's trivial. Oh, like here, download something, upload to Dropbox. Download something, upload to Dropbox. Um, they should be taking heat. This is this is a ridiculous, um, like to call it lax is completely appropriate. This is what happens when you have governance. And I that was an adjective that I bleeped out there. When you have crap governance, when you have crap tone at the top, when you just say YOLO and everybody gets to put whatever they want on it, this is what happens. This is not good. Now, if it was BYOD, which I think is a blight against our uh, society uh, from a security perspective, then I'd get it because I can't tell you what you can and can't install on your own device. But this was a government issued device. You absolutely have no authority. And they definitely have policies, written administrative policies saying what you're allowed to do and not do with those mobile devices, which they're absolutely violating. <sighs> Like we're not even like we haven't even dabbled into the the fact of getting compromised. We're just talking about people running these devices, making stupid decisions, and doing data exposure and data leakage. Now let's take it a step further, where you download a malicious app because you're like, "Ooh, I'm gonna get these nudes. Ooh, I'm gonna get this deep fake. Ooh, I'm gonna get the um the tick the the TikTok uh, blurry filter remover so I can see nakeds behind that, right?" Whatever it is, I'm going to download this like Bitcoin wallet thing that's supposed to give me 3x on my mining. Whatever it is, you're getting compromised, bro. And if you're allowing them to do that, you got key logging. So now people can sniff the credentials that you're typing, the emails you're typing, further compromising federal law enforcement. So it's not all about you, Johnny, and your phone and your like slots app. You are compromising a larger organization, donkeys. And you know what? I don't even blame Carl. I, I don't even blame Carl um, because if you, if you give somebody a phone, right, and they're allowed to do things, right, you could, say, you could have an administrative policy that says you're not allowed to do that, right? But that doesn't stop you from doing it. If I hand a phone to Carl Ice Agent and he's like, sitting there waiting, doing nothing. And he's like, oh, let me just download like this game. Let me download Candy Crush. Cool. I can do it. So let's keep going. Put a technical policy in. When you go down to download Candy Crush, it comes up and says, you're not authorized to download this. doesn't matter how bad Candy Crush he wants to download. It's not going to happen. This is what MDM is. And this is what it looks like when you implement it correctly. This hot mess right here, this is what happens when you implement it in the default config and don't freaking do anything. I'm sure there's a lot of politics involved. I'm sure there's a lot of like hand rigging and, you know, the ICE agents talking about, you're not out here in the field, you IT nerd. Unlock the ability to download the app or somebody who's been there 25 years that's got a lot of juice. They flex on the IT engineers and basically open it up. But anyways, this is ridiculous. Thanks to today's episode sponsor, Offsec. 
Offsec, formerly Offensive Security, the cyber training company behind the well-known OSCP certification and Kali Linux distro, is running a virtual summit for CISOs and cybersecurity leaders called Evolve on November 15th. Attend Evolve and get insider insights from a former bank hacker. Discover strategies on stretching your security budget and get tips to attract the creme de la creme of talent. It's more than just an event. It's a masterclass helping you evaluate your cybersecurity leadership game. Hear from forward-thinking cybersecurity leaders from companies like Cisco, Amazon, Salesforce, and more. Register today and get the insights you need to help shape the future of your company's security. Sign up right now at offsec.com slash evolve. Microsoft. All right, we are at the mid-roll. Really quickly, just it reminds me too, did we hit it at 8.30? Hell yeah, priceless pancake. All right. It just reminds me. There's a um, there is a Darknet Diaries episode that's phenomenal. In fact, that he had to break it into two episodes because the guy was so interesting. If anyone knows, BSEC usually is right on top of this. But uh, if anyone knows, um, it, it it's the guy who's like the con man, and he gets caught by the police, and he starts narking out his buddies uh, on the dark web, and he's like operating from the IRS. I think it was the IRS's like headquarters. But he he conti- he actually notices that they're not paying attention to him because they're watching uh, like porn at work, and he he begins um, <laughs> he begins um, r- resuming operations as a as a bad guy direct like live from um, from from the IRS place. Okay, anyways, uh, it is the mid roll, guys. Love it, love it, love it. I hope you're getting value from the stream. Let me let me see really quickly. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, thank you all for being here. Let me know if the music is too loud. Golem Fun. That's exactly it. Golem Fun. Thank you so much, Matt McDaniel and Casually Joseph. Golem Fun is the episode. It's phenomenal. All right. Hey, thanks to the stream sponsors, Barricade and Panopsi Security. Also, anti, anti-siphon training. Anti-siphon training uh, over John Strand and his... Uh, stewardship is disrupting the traditional cybersecurity training industry by providing high quality cutting edge education to everyone, regardless of their financial position. Listen, as a student, money doesn't need to be an obstacle for you. anti and training is doing what they can for you to make that happen. Use the link in the description below. Go to anti and training, go to training. There's a drop down, go to pay what you can training and look at all these trainings that you can get for zero dollars giddy up on that giddy up all right love it love it love it uh we got a super chat space tacos had so much fun at the con yesterday my nerd brain's so very happy thanks jerry and kimberly and james and the whole squad for organizing uh you are most welcome all right we got golem fun up in here guys if you're getting value from the stream hit the like button we're at 408 people. That would have been a new record if it wasn't Tuesday and we hit 423. So shout out to all of you. Much love. We are straight crushing it, Team Live. Um, the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Kevin Mitchell has the baton. Kevin Mitchell, please tag somebody if you can. I would love it if you tag somebody. For the rest of you, listen up. People like Christopher Young, check this out. If you want to supercharge your LinkedIn feed, if you want to build a professional network, which I can't underscore enough is vitally valuable and vitally important, do the following. Go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag, hashtag simply cyber community challenge. Connect with the people who are using that post. Connect with the people who are commenting on the post. Comment on the post. Those are the three steps, okay? Find the, find the hashtag, comment on the post, and then connect with the people in the post and the comments. And what's going to happen is you are going to get, a, you're going to be in the comments. People are going to start connecting with you. There's over 180 baton posts to date, and we're going to keep adding them every day. Spend five minutes a day, five minutes a day. You want to double it, do 10 minutes a day. Believe me, in two weeks time, you will be glad. And consistency is paramount. Just 10 minutes every single day. Make it your Simply Cyber Community Challenge tasker. Believe me, you will be very, very happy when you do that. All right, guys. Hey, every single Thursday, our very own haircut fish, Dan Reardon, makes a meme of the week. He presented on track two yesterday and made a couple custom memes. 
Uh, so I'm going to share them here. A uh, little holiday uh, Halloween. This is, I think, Gary S. Pumpkins, but it's Jerry S. Pumpkins, perhaps, uh, if you're familiar with uh, SNL. So very nice. And then, of course, we've got Jerry Clippy uh, with, the, with the googly eyes. So shout out and thanks to Dan Reardon. Uh, haircut fish, always making the memes, always being part of the community. Thank you so much, Dan, for bringing smiles to everybody's face. All right. All right, guys. So let's keep on going with the news. Makes more AI moves. The company announced a collaboration with Oracle to use its Oracle Cloud to provide additional compute resources for inference operations as part of the features in Bing Search. This will use Azure Kubernetes service to orchestrate GPU nodes in Oracle Cloud. In other AI news, Microsoft-owned GitHub announced a Copilot Enterprise subscription tier. Previously, it offered a Copilot subscription, but it was for individuals only. This new tier will cost $39 per person per month, available in February. Customers can personalize Copilot for their specific code base and do fine-tuned modifications to the models running it. Wow. Okay, so check it out. Uh, this isn't really a this isn't really a cybersecurity story. Um, this is an AI ML story. Shall we play a game? And, and I'm not a huge fan, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. But basically, what I want to point out is that Microsoft, who owns Azure, which is uh, one of their largest revenue generators, um, basically is going to uh, become a customer of Oracle. Now, if you don't know this really quickly, um, again, this is not really InfoSec related, but uh, Google, okay, okay, so Microsoft, uh, Azure, and AW, Amazon AWS are like the two big D swinging in the room when it comes to cloud and cloud infrastructure and SaaS applications built on top of it, right? Like Netflix is on AWS, for example. Many, like the US government's on O365. Many of us are on O365. Many of us are PTSD from every time we hear a Teams message chime. But also, there's Google Compute. Google's like, you know, AWS and Amazon, uh, AWS and Microsoft are like one and one A. And then Google Compute is like two. It's like not really as far along, but it's there. And then way down the line, we have Oracle and IBM, right? So... But Oracle's got a Oracle actually has the TikTok contract for the United States, which I'm sure is Great cash, homie. lots of moolah. So Oracle's got infrastructure. If you didn't know it, they used to be known for their databases. I think their databases are jacked up. I I, I do not like working in Oracle infrastructure. If anyone here has worked in Oracle and you know what I'm talking about, it's 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 convoluted in my opinion. Anyways, the TLDR here is that Microsoft, somebody at Microsoft did a cost benefit analysis, looked at what it would cost to scale up their physical hardware infrastructure to support uh, Bing chat. And it costs less to rent out space from Oracle. That's all it is, right? Is it cheaper to buy a lawnmower, buy gas and spend an hour every weekend mowing your lawn? Or is it cheaper to hire someone for the season to mow your lawn? You do a cost benefit analysis. Hey, it costs about the same. Okay, then have someone else do it and get the hour back. Uh, it costs an A load more to have someone do it. Okay, well then let's model on ourselves. That's all that's happening here, right? Also, I mean, a factor you could can give consideration to also is maybe, I don't think Bing Chat's going anywhere. So, you know, if you wanted to just not invest in your own infrastructure, but I don't think that's what the, the case is here, especially since it, it's a multi-year deal. So there you go. Microsoft's doing so well that they've they've blown out their own infrastructure. All right, looks like uh, Edward has accepted the baton. There you go, Edward. Let's let's see your Simply Cyber Community Challenge post. Everybody else, go find Edward's post uh, later on today and connect with him and the people in the comments. Also, go find Kevin Mitchell's post. Connect with him. WhatsApp callers can now hide locations. The popular messaging app announced a new protect IP address in calls feature. With it, users can now opt in to hide call locations. These calls will use WhatsApp servers to hide IP address metadata used to estimate locations. Even though the calls are no longer going over a peer-to-peer -peer direct connection, the company said calls will remain end-to-end -end encrypted. WhatsApp routes group calls through its servers already, so this isn't new for them.
This marks the third privacy-focused feature for WhatsApp this year. In May, it added a chat lock feature to further protect access to sensitive conversations. And in June, it added a silence unknown caller setting. All right. So I don't use WhatsApp. I, I Well, I have it, which I don't like. I have to have it because uh, one of my family group chats insist on using it. I haven't been able to woo them over uh, to Telegram. But here's the deal. Um, this, this is a privacy feature for end users. So if you are into privacy, way to go. Hey, Paul Savage with a $20 super chat bomb. Thanks for putting the con on yesterday. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Heck yeah. My pleasure, Paul Savage. Thank you. And thank you to all the organizers and behind the scenes people. There were many, uh, who, uh, made it come together. It wasn't just me. I might, I might be the head of Voltron, but without arms and legs and a torso, Voltron's pretty lame. So shout out to, uh, shout out to all the organizers who, who made it a reality. All right. So check this out. When I read this story, you know what I see? I don't, I don't know if you guys saw this too, but as soon as I read this, I'm like threat actors now able to hide their location during calls. Dude, threat actors use WhatsApp all the time. They straight up, who hasn't got a pig butchering uh, scheme text message? Hey, are we still on for dinner Thursday? Hey, you left your golf clubs in my car. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong message. Let me send you pics of me. Let's get together. Send me money. Like, Jesus. So now all that this all this is going to do is threat actors are going to threat act harder. There you go. All right. I, I get it. Privacy is cool. I'm all, I'm all about privacy. Um, I will say this other thing really quickly. If I'm not mistaken, is WhatsApp who is WhatsApp China? WhatsApp China is WhatsApp China, or is WhatsApp Meta? Okay, so it says it's blocked in China, so that's not going to work. I was going to say data is the new gold. I'm I'm a big data is the new gold person. Um, in this format right here, yes, this call participant on the left cannot get the IP address of the call participant on the right because it gets all muddled and uh, rearranged up in the relay servers, kind of like the way Tor does. But guess what, y'all? Um, the people who are running the relay servers, they know what your IP address is. And I'm sure when you sign up for WhatsApp, you 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 agree to uh, all their terms and conditions, which means they have your IP address. They may not be revealing it to the other call participant, but you can be, you can believe that they are documenting where you are, who you are, and probably a million other pieces of telemetry. Jess Bishop dropping bombs. We've got the blue badge on Jess and a ten dollars super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. So proud of the community. Simply Cyber Fam is beautiful. I agree a hundred percent, Jess. Um, I'm a huge. I'm so proud and so happy and just like full of bursting with love uh with what simply cyber has become uh way beyond my wildest expectations and it's and it's it's entirely because of the community it's this thing simply cyber has evolved way past me um so anyways yeah holler at uh whatsapp and threat actors get into threat act my linkedin account got restricted yesterday for no reason please ra raise awareness campaign for me on linkedin by tagging my name abdul all right Ratimi, um, hmm, we'll have to look into that. I know that happened to, uh, um, oh my God, David Meese. Mining crypto with Azure automation. Researchers at SafeBreach discovered three different methods on how a cloud-based crypto miner could avoid detection while using Azure automation. This included finding an error in the Azure pricing calculator to let an attacker run any number of jobs without charge. Microsoft did subsequently fix that issue. Another involved using a test job to mine crypto, but setting its status to failed and then creating another test job for mining. This effectively hid the mining, albeit with a limit of one job at a time. The researchers also created a proof of concept Python package that could be used to mine crypto undetected. And Microsoft characterized this as a by design implementation, AKA no fixes likely coming. All right, Monero project. Hold on, sorry. So, uh, okay, so I can't tell if this, this says researchers uncover undetectable crypto mining technique. So this isn't being done. It's not like they discovered this. The researchers 
um, developed this and, you know, safe breach a lot. You could see here, it says cloud miner safe breach labs, a lot of, by the way, shout out to ASCII art. I love some ASCII art. Also, I agree. Um, uh, Leon Elliott, the John string crushed it. Um, so check it out. Um, this is a proof of concept safe. Breach. A lot of security vendor companies, uh, have a research arm and the research arm is basically just doing fun, cool stuff with the intent of making news in pub. Uh, so people hear about them and it's not, and it's much more palatable than, uh, like paid blog posts and, you know, PR marketing crap like that. So, um, here's the TLDR. I love this. This is attacking the process and getting right into the meat. Here's the thing. They found a bug that made it possible to execute an infinite number of jobs, which is a lot, totally free of charge. Okay. Microsoft has already fixed this issue, so it's not a big deal. Uh, the the, the uh, trade-off here is that it was wicked slow. You could only execute one job at a time. But guess what? If you set it up for automation and it's mining money, eventually it'll make some money. No big deal. So this, this is cool. Um, and again, I mean, you yourself, like if you did this yourself, right? I'm not saying you should be, you know, trying to steal or whatever, uh, but this... This was not illegal. This did not violate any terms. They they merely worked within the construct of what Azure set up for allowing use of Azure automation, right? So this is a cool, in my opinion, this is a cool process hack, right? Remember, in just to boil it really, really down for those who are looking to break in, when you are attacking, uh, like a, a threat actor attacks, right? You can only attack people process or technology. And a lot of times you'll do some variation of all three or two of them or whatever, but, but that's it, right? So people it's social engineering and, 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 you know, pretexting and whatever technology, it's straight exploits, it's lead hacks or stuff. Right. And then process, this is a perfect example. This was sitting right out there. It just took a clever perspective and some, um, grit to write the software that manipulated and took advantage of the process and some clicking on the Azure front end to set up the automation so you could mine for zero dollars, right? Wallet drained. A maintainer for the Monero project disclosed that a threat actor drained its community crowdfunding system wallet in early September. This saw roughly $437,000 worth of crypto stolen from the wallet. The attack took place using nine separate transactions over a matter of minutes. The attack seems similar to recent wallet draining attacks impacting Atomic Wallet, which the analyst at Elliptic attributed to Lazarus Group. The Monero Project's other wallets, including its general fund, remain unaffected. Businesses are one. All right. Um, so, I don't know, man. Crypto. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. Right. Okay. So check it out. I, I don't know much about this particular project. It does seem like real victims, not like, um, <laughs> not like how FTX's accounts got drained right before Sam Bankman free got arrested. Uh, by the way, shout out. Why are we not covering a story about Sam Bankman free being found guilty? Yes. Sam Bankman free going to jail, bro. Regulators. Mount up. Yes. Okay. So what you need to know about Monero is that in the world of cryptocurrency, Monero is the one that you get the closest to of having total anonymity and privacy. Threat actors love some Monero uh, because you can't really trace it. Uh, I'm not an expert on this. So there has to be a blockchain, but somehow if you go from like uh, Bitcoin to Monero, then Monero to Monero, then Monero back to Bitcoin, it's very difficult to understand who had what and where the money went and stuff like that. Finfrock's going to come on next Thursday, probably to talk about how he almost destroyed my channel uh, with his workshop the other day. But uh, maybe we can get into him a little bit about Monero. But but as a practitioner, this is what you should know about Monero. Like it's it, Threat actors like it because it's really hard. Now, the Monero project had a bunch of wallets and it looks like someone stole it. They mentioned it in the story, worth noting, $437,000. Not a bad payday, half a million dollars. Um, they mentioned Lazarus Group. Now, Lazarus Group, um, they typically don't get out of bed for less than a million, but you know, maybe maybe they had some uh, downtime, right? Maybe they were having a, a hacking contest 
at work about who could get, you know, Monero money or whatever. So anyways, Lazarus Group is the North Korean threat actor APT that's been around since like 2015. And they are basically bank robbers. That's how North Korea funds a lot of their uh, country's initiatives. Um, it sucks. Obviously, the, the Monero people are upset. Um, saying that it was deplorable. Someone, you know, here, the attacks unconscionable. They've taken funds. Someone might be relying to pay on their rent or their food. Um, and it looks like there's actually 5,000 wallets mysteriously drained of their funds uh, because of Atomic Wallet. Guys, I don't know. All I would, all I would say is, and I know that this sounds uh, like the sky is falling. I don't do crypto. I bought two NFTs a while back just to understand what the crap it was going on. I got a Coinbase account to figure out what the crap was going on. Uh, spoiler alert, lost a lot of money. A lot is very relative, but it, I, I chalked it off as like the, the cost of like getting a free, le not a free, but getting a lesson in how crypto works and how the markets work and stuff like that. But if you are putting your crypto money into a piece of software, like atomic wallet or whatever, and you don't have it in cold storage, you are accepting some level of residual risk that it will get stolen. A, a, a software wallet is just software and it's got vulnerabilities. And if you can, you, you know, you can be attacked social engineering the way Seth Green got his board ape stolen, or you could have it straight up technically exploited, right? Uh, Lazaro update. They want to talk to me before the new job posting was posted. They will move my app to the new one for me. The hiring manager was interested in me before the role was canceled. Bro, super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Lazaro, all these things are checking out as uh, judges. Very good. Yes, uh, we've got confirmation from the judges over there, Lazaro. That sounds awesome. The fact that they're talking to you and moving your app to the front of the line before they've even posted it. If I had to guess, Lazaro, don't dox yourself. But if I had to guess, this is an organization. It might even be a um, a large organ. I, I'm going to guess here. Don't 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 dox it. Okay, it's either a large organization with very structured policies and processes, or it's a, a government job. The fact that here's the deal. In reality, and guys, I say this all the time with networking. In reality, the hiring manager wants to hire Lazaro. The fact that they need to repost the job. That's an HR requirement. That is not a hiring manager wanting to get more candidates. This sounds like they want Lazaro for the job and they're having to like jump through the HR hoops to get it done. So good on you, Lazaro. I wish the very best for you. I'm sure all those in the community wish the best for you. So holler at you, boy. All right, guys. We've reached the end of the show. I want to say shout out and thanks to all of you. Holler later today at 4 p.m. Eastern time or 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you guys want your hair blown back and learn from an absolute master in the digital forensic space, come on in. Jessica Hyde, uh, Marine Jessica Hyde, experienced super digital forensics examiner. Uh, she specializes in mobile, but she's done everything. We're going to talk about digital forensics. We're going to talk about is it entry level? She is a practitioner to the core, but she has very similar philosophical uh, perspectives around our community, the cybersecurity community, and helping people. So this right here, this is going to turn into a glorious AMA um, on a cybersecurity career, cybersecurity industry, and digital forensics. All your questions will be asked. All right. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I've got, let's see. I, I am teaching at the Citadel today. It is 8.54, which means I am going to jaw jack just for a hot minute, y'all. Uh, Emmanuel Dark saying SPF is going to get buff in prison. We'll see. Um, all right, guys. Hey, real quick, I want to say thank you to all of you. If you, the super chats are great. The um, squad memberships are great. Really, thank you. Cobra Crown, my pleasure. Guys, if you got value from the show, hit the like button on the way out. It, 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 it merely helps other people discover the channel. That, that's, what, that's what it's all about. Um, what do we got going on? Tomorrow, Jack Scott has got her Simply CyberCon workshop. Remember that the um, 
Haiku Pro. Here, let me pull this up really quickly. Haiku Pro. The CTF on Haiku Pro is still... Let me not do this on screen. <laughs> um, oh, my God, bro. Um, the CTF for Simply CyberCon is open until 5 p.m. later today. It's the Flaming Donkey um, Challenge, if you, if you guys are, know what that is. Um, go into create a free account. You do not need to add your credit card or pay for anything to participate. Go to the flaming donkey, um, challenge and you can go ahead and pull it up. If you are, uh, presented the exceeded daily limit notification, it should be fixed now and the range will be open till five. So you should not get the exceeded daily information. Um, I played this a little bit last night. I got hung up. Um, the funny thing is I found. I found the passwords, but I was having a tough time finding the username. So with any credentials, you know, it, it, there's two parts, user and uh, password. So hopefully for those of you who have completed the uh, CTF, congratulations. Definitely share your badges on the Discord server. All right, let's go here. All right, good morning, everybody. Get some fried waffles from Flame and Donkey. Sure, good morning. All right. Thanks, Alicia Jerry. Good to see you. Christopher Young, hopefully you come back. Become a regular. You're welcome, buddy. Luke Canfield, don't sweat on the imposter syndrome. I, I've got a video on that. Okay. I, I got to tell you guys, my, one of my favorite things to say is I got a video for that. Um, let's get Let's get Luke Canfield sorted out. Going, going. There it is. Luke, we got you. Oh, this is one of the good videos too that I paid an editor to actually edit professionally. Luke Canfield. Going, going, going. There you go. And anybody else who's dealing with imposter syndrome, check out that video. I think you'll like it. Also, just so everybody knows, our very own Jenny Housley is going to be making a walkthrough video of the CTF. Um, once the CTF is closed. So if you're banging your head against it, you kind of struggling, uh, all will be revealed at the end. Have a great day, Omatola. All right, guys, I'm going to boogie out of here. I thank all of you for being here. Hopefully you come back at 4.30 PM for Jessica Hyde. Simply Cyber Con Week. Oh, oh, um, oh, oh, it's magic. Um, let me remind, let me share uh, um, this with everybody. This is the certificate of attendance. If you attended, if you registered, you will get an email with this uh, for your six CPEs, okay? So be on the lookout for that um, in your email, okay? All right, y'all. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Jerry, your chat. Until next time, stay secure. If you enjoyed that content, keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed the content.